ladies and gents, welcome to War Thunder with Mags. Now first up I'd like to say thank you to everybody who commented on my 500 subscriber video. Uh, you left me some great ideas, there will be some changes coming to the channel soon enough. First and foremost there will be a rebranding. When I created the channel I, I never expected it to get very big, so I just sort of whacked a picture on for the top for the banner, selected a, an icon at random that looked aircraft related and that was it, started uploading videos. That will be changing in the near future, as one of the things that was suggested. Uh, there will be arcade and realistic battle tutorials coming up, as well as uh, some advice on how to prepare for changing in between those modes when you first come up to them. Uh, another suggestion that I've received that I'd thought about doing in the past, but was never sure if there'd be any, uh, any interest in, was rather than covering the aircraft and their capabilities in-game, is actually doing a video covering the actual history of the aircraft within the game. I'd sort of taken a little spin at this in the past, but actually doing a series. The, there will be no particular uh, scheduling for this, but just covering the real life history of some of the aircraft that feature in this game, and eventually tanks and ships of course, as well as some of the aces or the heroes of World War II that operated these machines. I also discovered a problem during that video that I haven't exactly decided how I'm going to get past it yet, and this problem was how YouTube handles comments. Uh, despite having the spam filter completely disabled on my channel, the amount of people that commented that were giving really good ideas that were completely not spam, that YouTube decided to mark as spam, regardless of the fact that I have the spam filter disabled, was huge. I had to manually go through and enable pretty much uh, probably a good third of the comments that were put onto the video, which was uh, really annoying to have to do. But I'll continue doing it in the future for the moment. The other thing was the amount of people that I didn't have access to a reply button in order to be able to respond to some of the really good ideas you're giving. I'm not sure what to do about this yet. It isn't a huge problem at this moment. There are ways for me to get around it. But if the place continues to grow at the rate that it's growing, um, I may need to look into doing something about that in the future. Now, to this battle. Well, this is the BF-109 E3. I had a request to show some more German gameplay and to show some low-level aircraft in, in the future, because I haven't been showing a lot of those on the channel, and a lot of that was because a lot of the German aircraft got pretty hit pretty hard with some uh, various issues during 1.37, and it was really just disappointing to have to fly them, knowing what they should fly like compared to what we had in-game. However, I've been taking the opportunity in 1.39 to correct this. Now, this battle I'm not going to edit or cut at all. While I had some very good wins during the course of this uh, low-level flying, this battle was a loss and I've decided to show this one because it's a, it's a very good how-to lose a battle video. A lot of mistakes were made by my team. Things that were, were just the kind of mistakes that new players make. It was nothing malicious. But it's worth pointing them out so that other players can learn from those mistakes. I also want to show this video in its completion. I, I generally edit and cut the videos down to show the good bits and cut out the climbing and how I'm moving around the battlefield. I want to leave all this intact for this video so you can see there's always a reason that I'm flying somewhere where I'm going. Now first up I've taken off the runway, I've taken it to altitude, I've pulled up at about 11,000 feet, still climbing. The rest of my team has gone to the north side of the map, so I'm taking the turn and going to the south side of the map, covering the opposite side of the main lake, just to check out and scope out what's in the area. And the first target I come across is the most powerful aircraft on the enemy team, an F4U Corsair. Now an F4U is... It's an incredibly dangerous aircraft to face in an E3 because it outperforms the E3 in pretty much every area. It's faster in a straight line, it's faster in a dive, it's more manoeuvrable, it climbs better, it has higher energy retention. And most importantly of it all, it has more firepower with more ammunition, being as it's armed with 650 caliber machine guns. So taking this plane out of the battle is exceptionally important at this point in time, and I'm the only one in a position to do so. Now a TBF and an F4F have both been sighted as well, they're heading straight towards our forces, neither one is showing any signs of turning back in my direction, so I don't have to worry about them at the moment. I'm just pointing the nose up to climb into the sun, hopefully I'll get a little bit of 
the, the, the F4U will have a little bit of difficulty targeting me, but I don't think it's going to work. He's too close. He's definitely moving to make a move at me. As you can see, at low speeds, I'm having issues bringing the nose around fast enough. It's closing in very quickly. So I have to just keep the rudder on and keep a slow right-hand bank. Allows me to shoot past. I only take a single clip, and it does no damage to the aircraft at all. Now, he pushes that F4U straight into a climb, showing how much higher a climb performance it has over the E3. Its burst climb is phenomenal. He's put himself into a high angle position. Now he's in a perfect kill shot. So I have no choice here but to actually go nose to nose on an F4U that's diving on me. Take the shot and then bug out sideways straight away to throw myself between his guns. I get lucky, he eats all of my 20 millimeters straight in the engine. I roll between his guns and don't take any damage. I don't recommend head-to-heads at any time unless it's absolutely necessary. Unfortunately, that was a situation where it was necessary and it was a risk. I really was rolling the dice there on whether or not I'd be able to pull that off. But that's the most powerful fighter on the enemy team eliminated. Now, as I said earlier, this was a match where I think I did everything that I could to try and make this battle a win, but my team was having none of it. But it was just on new player mistakes. Here's the first one. That's a TBF. TBFs are not particularly fast or particularly maneuverable aircraft. They're relatively easy to kill in this game. They'll absorb a lot of damage, but it's not hard to get that damage applied. Right now, it's being engaged by two BF-109 F-1s. These are 20mm equipped F first of the F-series 109s available in the game, and they are the two most powerful aircraft we have on our team. Now, these two fighters began engaging this TBF at about the same time I engaged the Corsair. Now, I've killed the Corsair, crossed the map to fly directly above them, and the TBF is still up. And it's not because it's absorbing or tanking too much damage. It's because, well, the two F1 pilots are not really exercising any trigger control, and they're missing a lot of shots. The TBF has taken barely any damage at this point in time. It's only just now that they start getting the guns on target. And I just shot a message through to them saying, come on guys, you know, get it together, kill that TBF, I don't want to have to come down there and do it myself. And I really don't want to have to go down there. It's not only, it's a waste of ammunition when two targets have already been firing on it. It's it potentially could be looked at as a kill still, considering these two guys have been on the target for so long. And it also means me giving up 12,000 feet of altitude that I don't want to have to do. That TBF is scraping the deck, and I don't want to have to go down there to do the job. But I'm maintaining top cover in the area because there are multiple fighters still unaccounted for on this map. I haven't spotted them yet or seen them anywhere and I've crossed the map twice now. So I'm expecting somebody to come in soon enough. And they finally take the TBF down. Now they exercise so little dis uh, trigger discipline that both those aircraft have drums dry. They're completely out of ammunition. So both of them now need to RTB to reload. So that's mistake number one. Our two top fighters taking themselves out of the battle for the next five minutes while they get reloads because they didn't exercise trigger discipline on the target. They sprayed and prayed like it was arcade. You must exercise trigger discipline at all times in RB, otherwise you will take yourself out of the, pl out of the battle. And a plane with no ammunition is just as good as a dead plane. It's of no use to the team. Now I've turned the plane back around and I'm heading for the ground forces line that is on the far side of the lake on this map. Now I'm heading over this way to check to see if anybody's there. I don't suspect that anyone will be. I haven't seen any signs of battle there but I need to confirm that. When I'm flying around the battlefield at this point when there's no enemy visible for me to attack when I'm flying in a direction, I'm systematically eliminating sections of the map that they can, they can be in. First thing I need to do is check my tail. This is an area that's going to be at my back in a few minutes, so I need to know that there are no enemy there before I move on to my next area. I've passed through, nothing's in that zone. The next thing I need to check is the far side of the map, specifically their runway. Now it's at this point that the start of the second mistake of this match is taking place. Now our MC-202 has just engaged an enemy fighter and killed it, but he's taken critical battle damage in the process. 
He's currently RTB to the runway to get a reload on ammo and repairs. Nothing inherently wrong with that at all. That's just that's what happens. It's realistic. On his way through, he's picked up two of the enemy biplanes, the AI-controlled biplanes, and they're now following him back to the runway. Again, this isn't a mistake on his behalf. This happens. The mistake that's taking place at the moment is why we have a number of aircraft that are at altitude on the far side of the map. They've all spotted these two AI biplanes trailing this MC-202 back to base. The entire team is currently diving on two AI that are heading towards the runway. So we now have an MC-202 that's critically damaged returning to base, two F-1 BF-109s that are returning to base because they're ammoed out, and the remainder of our team, another two aircraft, that are returning to base to shoot at AI. The enemy team, the only aircraft out here challenging the enemy players at the moment, is me. And even if my entire team was loaded up on ammo at the moment, there's 20 kilometers between me and my backup. So I've made it to the runway and I'm just doing a quick scan. For those of you who are unfamiliar with spotting dots on runways, uh, they look like a black smudge on the tarmac that looks out of place with the rest of the textures. There were none there, so the runway is clear. No players are there, and I've just torn off my flap while I'm in the middle of manoeuvres. What I did come across, however, was this biplane. Now, it needs to be eliminated. It's floating around the far side of the map. It's going to stick near the enemy runway at all times, and as you can see, we're down on tickets. If we find these enemy aircraft and eliminate them, we're still going to be losing tickets to ground forces attrition. The last thing we want to have to do is cover 20 kilometers of map to get over to this AI and kill it, even if we know where it is, while we're sticking down on tickets. So this needs to be taken out. I tried maneuvering with it under flaps. That was a big mistake. I ended up tearing them off due to stress. That was a stupid mistake on my behalf. I'm now doing what I should have done in the first place. I've managed to get the AI to follow me. I'm pulling out a couple of kilometer gap so I have plenty of turning circle to bring it around, and then I'm going to take the AI in a head-on. Just taking it into a split S to get position. Um, I know, I guess said again, I don't like doing head-ons. I don't even like doing them with biplanes or AIs, but I, I really were a lack of options when taking on something like a Fury. It's just it's too manoeuvrable to dogfight with. So quick shot through, duck underneath, that's the AI out. We don't have to come to this section of the map again, and I've managed to clear the runway as a potential spot for enemy aircraft. Just checking in again, no smudges or marks, nothing out of the way, there's no aircraft there. So that tells me the aircraft aren't on the left battle line, or I'm pretty sure they haven't gotten there, and there are no aircraft on the runway, so they're somewhere between me and my base, likely to the right-hand side of my map. Now, it was at this point that I've actually noticed that my entire team has returned to the runway, that absolutely nobody is on the battlefield besides me at all. And I can see that there's two AI Furies over there. I'm hoping at the moment that the remaining two enemy players that are currently unaccounted for are also at that runway, and that's why there is a furball happening there. I'm really hoping that it's not the entire team over there either trying to get ammunition or blowing their ammunition on two biplanes. Of course it is. Now, what's worse about this is the two remaining aircraft we had that weren't RTB for ammo. In the process of killing these two biplanes, we'll also unload every single scrap of ammunition that they have. So the entire team needs to land to reload before they can re-engage in combat over two AI. The entire team has basically been off the battlefield for 10 minutes. These two player controlled aircraft have had free reign for that long to do whatever they like. Now I'm shooting a message through now just to confirm that there are no player aircraft over there that I currently can't see that aren't being proxy spotted. I've re-cleared the left hand side or from the enemy base, the left hand side ground forces. There are no player controlled aircraft there. So I've narrowed down my options, and they've said that no, there's no players over there, and I've just seen a pop-up on the lower right-hand side of the screen. There is ground forces being destroyed by an F-2A at low altitude. And because I've been flying away the way I have, I've effectively eliminated all the locations on the map that the enemy forces could be at, so I now know where they are. There are both on the far side of the lake 
leaning towards the rear of the lake, about the way that I'm about to start diving. I've still got no visual on them. I drop the throttles back slightly so I can use my dive speed to start cooling off my engine because I'm about to go into combat. And sure enough, there's the first target, P-40. Now, that's a nasty aircraft to have to fight as well. The P-40 is more manoeuvrable, carries more firepower, more ammunition, and is just as fast as the E-3. In good hands, a P-40 is an incredibly dangerous aircraft, so I'm only really going to get one chance to boom this target, and if I mess it up, I'm not going to be able to engage it in a dogfight. So I bring the nose down and around, he pulls it into a climb at just the right time, I overshoot, there's nothing I can do to get back on his tail now, not without having backup in the area. But I've spotted the F2A as well. So firewall the throttles, maintain a dive even in the turn, get my airspeed up as much as I can. I've got to put some distance between me and the P40, and I have to drag it to my team. Now I can already see the F2A pilot's beginning his turnaround, he's going to try and nose to nose me on the way through, and I don't have a choice. Now this isn't the first F2A, this is the, the one with four 50 calibre machine guns, so it is incredibly dangerous. I take a lucky shot, take him out, but that there is why you don't nose to nose. That's my third one for the match and my luck has run out. Why he didn't kill my aircraft, he's effectively destroyed my left wing. He's taken an easy 30 to 40 kilometers an hour off my top speed and destroyed my maneuverability. However, I am in luck. My team has just started finishing their reloads as beginning to take off. There's already an MC-202 airborne, the F-1s are getting ready to take off, and the rest of the team is on the ground reloading now. So I'm firewalled the throttles as much as I can, and I'm trying to drag this P-40 all the way back to them. Because if you look at the ticket counter at the top of the screen, we're losing to ground forces attrition. This map's about to be lost, without, with or regardless of whether we not we shoot down this aircraft or not. So I'm trying to keep it low, but the P-40 got smart, he spotted the incoming aircraft, realised they're back off the ground. I'm still the most advanced aircraft in this battle, I'm still the one that's closest to the P-40, so I have to bring it around and get back into this fight. Even though I'm crippled at the moment, I cannot afford to return to base. If I do, it's likely going to be game over. Well, that was my thinking anyway. The truth of the matter was, this was game over anyway. Uh, when the P-40 realised he was about to get bounced by the rest of the team and turned around, he too realised that ground forces were about to win this battle for him in the next few seconds. So he, all he has to do to win is turn around and fly in the opposite direction until it's over. And there's nothing we can do about it. The P-40 is just fast enough to stay ahead of everything except the F-1s. And at this point in time, it has an easy four kilometer lead on the first F1 that can get to it. By the time they've closed the distance, the match is over. Two things cost the loss of this match. One was no trigger discipline amongst new players, spraying and praying. Having to return to the runway effectively takes you out of the battle for five minutes and my entire team took themselves out of the battle for more than that. Overall, there was around a 10 minute hole where two enemy aircraft or three enemy aircraft were pretty much unmolested for the entire match. The second mistake that was made was tunnel visioning onto AI. AI are great for free credits, but you go for them at the end of the match. You only ever eliminate them early if they're in a position where they're going to make victory difficult. So, the results of the match was second place with three kills, final blow, terror of the sky, and bulletproof awards, 30,285 silver lines, 799 research points, but that was on a 66% because I'm only I'm researching the 262C1A, which is an Aero 5 aircraft, so it was never going to get a lot on a loss. And this was a loss where the enemy team only had one aircraft remaining at the end of the match, and our team had only lost one and the AI. The end of that match was six to one aircraft in our favor, and it was a loss. And the only reason it was a loss was a series of very new player mistakes, but the culmination of every player on the team making those mistakes at exactly the same time 
effectively took the entire team out of commission for almost for between five and ten minutes, handing the entire battlefield and control of the battlefield to the enemy team so they were easily able to take out ground targets and secure the win before we even cross guns. So ladies and gents, I hope you found this video interesting. I hope you, I hope it showed you a few things and made you think about a few things when you go into battle that just making what seems to be a very small mistake culminating with a large group of people can take the team out without you ever needing to be shot down. Hope you enjoyed it. Click like if you do. Subscribe if you want to see more. Fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.